Hello! Welcome to GSK's Science in the Summer. Our theme this year is Chemistry is Everywhere. My name is Daniel Wheeler. I'm an educator with the Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center here in Chapel Hill on the University of North Carolina campus. Today, we're going to be learning about chemical reactions. So a chemical reaction is when one or more chemicals mix with each other at, to create something new. So, humans are not the only ones who do chemistry. So chemical reactions are found throughout nature. And in fact, some animals and plants are so good at it that we decided to copy them. This is an entire field of science known as biomimicry, where scientists study the way that animals do chemical reactions to try and figure out how we can use it for ourselves. So today we're gonna to be talking about bombardier beetles. So bombardier beetles are found throughout the world. There are hundreds of species. They're found on six of our seven continents, not including Antarctica. You can even find them here in Orange County in Chapel Hill, uh, but they are found throughout the world. They're small, they're carnivorous, and they're called bombardier beetles because a bombardier is the person in a military aircraft who drops the bombs. And these beetles are able to create their own explosions by using a chemical reaction. So they mix two chemicals together in their abdomen to create an explosion to defend themselves. But before we explore our beetle, we're gonna make one and see exactly how it works. And we're gonna need several materials to do that. So we have a test tube. So this one is made out of plastic. If you don't, you can buy these at a science supply store or even a restaurant supply store. If you don't have access to test tubes, just any tube will do, like a small shampoo bottle or a film canister. You're going to need some pipe cleaners. So these pipe cleaners are the beetle's legs. So each pipe cleaner is gonna make two legs. And you can see I've got three of them because our beetle is an insect because insects have six legs. If this was a bombardier spider, does anyone know how many pipe cleaners I would need? Four, I'd need four because spiders have eight legs. They're arachnids, not insects. So we've got our legs, we've got our tube that's going to be the beetle's body, and we're gonna need several other materials too to conduct our experiment. You'll need a pipette, and so that's just basically a fancy word for an eyedropper. So you'll just need some way to measure liquid and then get that liquid into the beetle's body, the test tube. So we'll need a pipette. You'll need a funnel. And then you'll need some vinegar and baking soda. And then you'll need some way to decorate your beetle. So I've got a couple of pre-made beetles here. Uh, they're not very fancy, but if you've got some markers, uh, you can decorate the outside of the test tube with fun colors, give it stripes, uh, a face, uh, crazy teeth, whatever you wanna do. But, so our first step is we take our beetle's body, that's the test tube. So the bottom of the tube here is going to be your beetle's face. And the opening here it's going to be the beetle's end. So we take our first pair of legs, one pipe cleaner, we're gonna find the center and wrap it around the test tube so the legs are equal. And you'll just wanna give that a couple of twists so it's nice and secure. So there's your first pair of legs. And we'll just repeat that for the other two pipe cleaners. And you can use whatever colors you want. I went for primary colors here on this beetle. You can make them all the same if you want your beetle to be consistent. But we're just gonna take the last pair, twist it up. All right, 
so our beetle has its legs. So once the legs are on there, make sure they're nice and straight. Then we need our beetle to be able to stand up. So to do that, I'm just gonna bend it, give it some knees and feet. So just flatten it out. So bend it in the middle for the knee and then flatten it on the end for the foot. We want our beetles to be nice and stable. So we can stand up straight. So once the knees and the feet are made, yeah, there we go, got a little distance between his tum and the table. And it's actually good if, like this, if his face is pointing towards the table and the end is pointing up, kind of like a cannon, because he wants to be able to defend himself. So once our beetle is standing up, we need to give him some decoration. So you'll need some googly eyes, so these are pretty easy to find at any craft store. So I'm gonna dump our eyeballs are out of the bag. And then you'll need some kind of adhesive. So you can use tape, you can use super glue, I'm just gonna use plain old school glue. And I'll take one eye. And just a dot of glue to the end and stick it on our beetle's face. So he's almost there. Halfway to seeing. Add another dot. The second eye. Pop right there. So beetles, especially carnivorous ones like this, usually have nice, large, well-developed eyes so they can find their prey and aim their bombardiering. So I've got our beetle's eyes on, and then we've got some pom-poms as well. So you can find these at a craft store pretty easily too. And you can pick whatever colors you want. Uh, I've only got five pom-poms, but you can make your beetle very fluffy if you wanted to. I'm just gonna stick them all over the beetle's body so that he's well decorated so that he can be fancy for the beetle ball that he's going to later. I'm just lining them up along our beetle's spine, but you could try and stick them to his belly if you wanted to. I'm just gonna add our last two right here near the opening. Now, before we actually have our chemical reaction, you will probably want to let this glue dry just so that your pom-poms and your eyeballs don't fall off while you're trying to conduct your experiment, which is why I've got a couple of pre-made beetle friends here that I am going to be using to actually conduct the experiment. All right, so we can see our beetle, our demonstration beetle is set up here in a dish tub. So you'll want yours somewhere safe, somewhere that you don't mind getting wet. All right, so uh, as you can see, our beetle is angled upwards with the abdomen, so that's the end part of an insect, the abdomen is pointing up. So in a real life bombardier beetle, it's two chemicals in their abdomen called hydroquinone, which you may not have heard of, and hydrogen peroxide, which you probably have. It's this clear liquid that stings to clean out cuts. So it mixes those two chemicals together in its abdomen and then aims it and squirts it at whatever is trying to eat it. So those two chemicals react and they there are a lot of ways to tell that a chemical reaction is happening. So it could create a bad smell, like with milk spoiling, that's a chemical reaction. It could cause a change in temperature. It could make the two chemicals get hot or cold. It could create light. Uh, and in the case of the bombardier beetle, it does all of those things. It makes a really bad smell. It is an exothermic reaction, which means that it generates heat. And there is some, there's a popping sound and I think a little bit of light generated. So it fires this boiling, stinky liquid onto the face 
of anything that is trying to eat it. And so you can understand why we didn't want to get those two actual chemicals for this demonstration because we don't want to melt the dish tub and we don't want to deal with a bad smell. All right, so instead, like I said before, we're going to be using baking soda and vinegar. So we just need to get some baking soda into our beetle's body. So to do that, you could use a funnel. And if you don't have a funnel, you can just use a piece of paper. So if you take the piece of paper and just bend the two ends towards each other and tape it, you get a nice little spout. So I am going to take a spoon, get some baking soda, aim my funnel into the beetle's abdomen, and fill the beetle up with baking soda. That should be more than enough. All right, so we have our first chemical in our chemical reaction. And our next one is the vinegar. So the baking soda you can see is a solid. The vinegar is a clear liquid. So I'll take our pipette and see one end is squishy. I'll place it into the vinegar, squeeze it, and fill it up with liquid. So now we have our vinegar, we have our baking soda, and we're ready to do our experiment. So I'm just gonna aim it in there. You wanna make sure that the beetle's abdomen is pointed away from your face and away from anything that you don't wanna get wet. So it should be safe in this dish tub here. I'm gonna add in our baking soda. Look at that. So what happened? So if you're watching, you can see that it foamed up and we can do this a whole bunch. I can get more vinegar, add it again, and our beetle bombards again. Okay, so how do we know a chemical reaction is happening? So I had a liquid, the vinegar, and a solid, the baking soda, and then it came shooting out of here. Did y'all see those bubbles? Those bubbles mean that a gas is being produced. So there's a new phase of matter being created. So it changed from a liquid and a solid to a gas and a liquid and a solid. So there's still, I can keep doing this, but eventually the baking soda will get used up. It won't be baking soda anymore and our reaction won't be able to keep happening. And there's another way we can tell a chemical reaction is happening. If you carefully feel the outside of the test tube, you'll feel that it is cold. It turned cold. So this is, instead of an exothermic reaction like with the real beetle, which produces heat, this one is an endothermic reaction. It sucks up heat and makes it feel cold. Okay, so let's review what we learned. Now, so we learned that humans are not the only animals who do chemistry. Plants do chemistry too, but also are bombardier beetles and many other types of species. This is fairly easy to clean up. So baking soda and vinegar might actually make your drains a little cleaner. So just make sure you flush it with plenty of water and you can just pour it down your drain and it's perfectly safe. All right, so uh, thank you for watching, and this has been GSK's Science in the Summer.